Today's lesson is Buenos Aires, the Paris of South America. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger. Hello, I'm Kiki. We're going to continue talking about Argentina, specifically Buenos Aires, which is the capital city and the largest city in Argentina, which again is a country in South America. It's probably going to take you a long time to get there. My goodness, you're going to have to fly from Taipei across the Pacific Ocean to the USA, and then I believe you fly to Miami after that, and then you fly from Miami down to South America. Be prepared for a long flight, but hopefully it will be worth the trouble because there are lots of things to see and do in Buenos Aires. And because Buenos Aires is a city with its own personal spice that often people will think of it as the Paris of South America. Indeed, and we gave you some examples of things that make this city really special. You've got the delightful colonial architecture. You've got vast green spaces. And, of course, you have that cemetery that you can check out with its impressive monuments. And then across the street on weekends is the Feria Recoleta, where you can pick up some locally made souvenirs and try some delicious street food. And finally, you can check out the National Museum of Fine Arts, which has a vast collection of works by Rembrandt and Van Gogh and Picasso. And, of course, it's a great pink building that will impress you when you see it. Well, that's not the only pink building in Buenos Aires. There's another pink building which we're going to check out as we begin our lesson with the first part. Let's listen. Another pink-hued attraction in Buenos Aires is the Pink House, which has been the office of the President of Argentina since 1898. Eva Perón famously addressed her supporters from the balcony of the building, which was allegedly painted with a mix of red and white paint to unite the colors of opposing political parties in an appeal for peace. 对抗在课文中 opposing 为现在分词做形容词用 表示对立的 例如, The opposing teams shook hands before the baseball game 敌对双方在棒球比赛开打前握手 又或者说 Dale was the only one in the group who opposed the idea Dale是团队中唯一一个反对这个点子的人 另外补充这个字相关名词 Opponent O-P-P-O-N-E-N-T Opponent 它有比赛中的对手或是竞争者、反对者的意思。举例来说, In the final game, the tennis player lost to his opponent by only one point. 在决赛中, 那位网球选手仅以一分之差输给了对手。再举一个例子, Rick was at a disadvantage on the basketball court since his opponent was much taller than he is. Rick在篮球场上处于劣势,因为他的对手比他高很多。Okay, so the first paragraph for today's lesson begins by saying there's another pink-hued attraction in Buenos Aires, and that is the Pink House, which has been the office of the President of Argentina since 1898. So it's pink-hued. Hue means a color or a shade of a color. And again, this is a building that is an attraction, a place that people go to check out. It's pink or it's pink-hued. And it's called the Pink House, and it's been the office of the president since 1898. So imagine that you're the leader of this country, and you live in a pink house, whereas if you're the leader of the United States, you live in the White House. And it's pretty interesting because you don't think that a government building could have such a feminine or girly color, mm. but I think it's really significant. And we will find out later why the president's house is pink. And the president has lived there since 1898. It's not the same person, of course. Mm. Uh, they come and go and they live and they die and stuff like that. And Eva Perón famously addressed her supporters from the balcony of the building, which was allegedly painted with a mix of red and white paint to unite the colors of opposing political parties in an appeal for peace. The balcony, of course, is an open area on the second floor of a building, usually the second floor. I suppose it could be higher. But uh, you often see that in uh, movies of old political movements. The leader is standing on the balcony waving to his followers below. 
And here, Eva Perrin was addressing her supporters from the balcony, and、uh, well, allegedly it was painted pink by mixing red and white together. That's what you get when you mix red and white together. You get pink. So allegedly means supposedly. We don't know a hundred percent for sure if that was the case, but、uh, people believe this. Allegedly, it was painted with a mixture of red and white to unite those opposing political parties. So clearly, the opposing parties—they were one party was a red and the other party was white—and when they mixed together, it created this pink hue or this pink. Building and in return, this signifies trying to bring these political parties together. So they are trying to appeal for peace. So they're trying to fight for peace, and that is why they mix these two colors together. And the pink house has stayed pink since 1898. It's been pink because of tradition, I suppose. Another equivalent would be in the United States, where we have the Republicans red and the Democrats blue. They can mix those. Colors together and make purple and paint the White House purple. Or here in Taiwan, of course, you've got the greens and the blues. And if you mix those colors together, maybe you'll get teal or something like that. And you could paint the presidential palace in that color. I don't think anybody would want to do that, but you get the idea. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's listen now to the second part and talk about that wide avenue. To take in more of the city's sights, take a bike tour along the July 9th Avenue, the widest avenue in the world, which is named for the day Argentina seized independence from Spain in 1816. You'll see many of Buenos Aires's architectural and cultural treasures, including the obelisk built to commemorate the foundation of the city, Laval Street, home to numerous cinemas, and the Columbus Theater, one of the world's best opera houses. 第二部分，我们看到动词 seize， 它的意思是夺取、控制或是抓住。例如 ，The thief seized Stephanie's backpack and ran away with it. 小偷抢走了 Stephanie 的背包，然后带着它逃跑了。又或者说 ，Alan seized the talent show opportunity to show off his singing ability. Alan 把握才艺表演的机会，炫耀他的唱功。再来，我们看到形容词 numerous。这个单字的意思是许多的或是大量的。例如 ，There are numerous restaurants to choose from at the department store. 百货公司里有许多餐厅可以选择。下一个我们看到单字 opera， 它是名词，指的是歌剧。例如 ，If you are going to the opera, you should dress appropriately. 如果你要去看歌剧，你应该穿着得体。或是 ，As soon as the opera ended, the audience stood and applauded loudly. 当歌剧一结束，全场观众齐力大声鼓掌。Okay, so again, you're in Argentina, you're in Buenos Aires, and you're on tour of the city. You've just checked out the Pink House, and now you want to take in more of the city's sights. So one good way to see a lot of the city is to take a bike tour, especially along the July Ninth Avenue. The widest avenue in the world, which is named for the day Argentina seized independence from Spain in 1816. So yes, you can probably rent a bike there, or maybe they have bike share programs there, and maybe this avenue has some decent bike paths so you don't get run over. And you can take a bike tour along this avenue, which is called July Ninth Avenue. It's the widest avenue in the world. So I can't really think of any really wide avenues here in Taiwan. Maybe Renai Lu or Xini Lu or something like that. Those are pretty wide roads. But this avenue is probably much wider than those. So seized independence is when Argentina stopped. Being a colony of Spain, they fought for their independence and they won. So they were able to get their independence. Exactly. So of course, Argentina thought they should separate from Spain for various reasons, and they seized independence. They took independence from Spain way back in 1816. 
and you'll see many of Buenos Aires's architectural and cultural treasures, including the obelisk built to commemorate the foundation of the city, and some other sites which we'll get to in a couple of seconds here. So if you go check out this avenue. If you go for a bike tour or a bus tour or whatever, you can see some of these famous sites. They've got some architectural and cultural treasures. So architectural just means having to do with architecture. They're really fine buildings, maybe some colonial buildings or some more modern buildings. And we've got the obelisk. An obelisk is kind of like a monument. It's square or rectangular in shape from the bottom, and then it's got like a little pyramid at the top. The Washington Monument in Washington D.C. is a good example of an obelisk, although it's not called that. But this particular structure is called the obelisk in Buenos Aires. And why do we have the obelisk? Well, it was built to commemorate the foundation of the city. Now, if you commemorate something, what does that mean? Commemorate is to celebrate and to remember something. And usually, when you commemorate something, you are also paying a lot of respect to this monument or commemorating a celebration or a day that something significant happened. Exactly. So it recognizes the foundation of the city. Foundation is just when something is established, when it begins. They probably signed some documents and said, "Okay, we're going to build a city here. It's going to be called Buenos Aires, and it's going to be the capital of the country." So, of course, this obelisk or this monument. Celebrates or commemorates the foundation of this particular city. Also, we've got La Valle Street, home to numerous cinemas, and the Columbus Theater, one of the world's best opera houses. So, first of all, let's talk about this particular street, La Valle Street. It's home to numerous cinemas. Numerous just means many, and a cinema, of course, is a movie theater, so you can go there. And see a movie or two if you've got the time. And also, there's the Columbus Theater, which is one of the world's best opera houses. Are you a big fan of opera, Kiki? I think I am. I love Phantom of the Opera, although it's not exactly a traditional opera. But I do think that opera singers are really amazing the way they are trained. To sing. Indeed, of course, we've got a couple of operas from、uh, Mozart there, the Magic Flute or whatever, and of course, Carmen and Ida are very famous operas as well. So if you're into opera, you can go there and check it out. That's when they sing to classical music. They go、Whoa! something like that. I'm a terrible opera singer, but you get the idea. So those again are some things you can check out in Buenos Aires. In South America, and we've got one more paragraph to discuss about Buenos Aires. So let's get to it. Let's listen first, and then we'll talk about it. If you'd rather browse the city's highlights at a slower pace, check out the grand, splendid Athenaeum, a former theater turned bookshop that was once declared the world's most beautiful bookstore by National Geographic magazine. Pick up a book about Buenos Aires's rich history. And enjoy it with a cup of coffee or a glass of Malbec at one of the hundreds of quaint cafes throughout this beautiful South American city. 第三部分我们看到单词 browse， 它是动词，指的是随意看或是浏览、翻阅。例如 ，David browsed the store while Tina chatted to an old friend. Tina 在与一位老朋友聊天时 ，David 随意逛了一下商店。又或者说。Ted usually spends an hour browsing the web before he goes to sleep. Ted 睡前通常会花一个小时的时间浏览网络。最后，我们看到名词 highlight， 这个单字指的是最精彩、最有趣的部分或是亮点、重点。举例来说 ，Visiting Disneyland was a highlight of Yuri's trip to Los Angeles. 造访迪士尼乐园是 Yuri 洛杉矶旅程的一大亮点。最后一个例子。The highlight of this vacation was our trip to the ancient ruins. 这个假期的重头戏是我们的趟古代遗址之旅。Okay, moving on. The third and final part of our lesson for today says, if you'd rather browse the city's highlights at a slower pace, 
check out the grand, splendid. Athenaeum. So when you browse something, you're really looking at it at a slower pace. You're not going through the whole city really fast. You're taking your time to take it all in. You're taking time to see the city's highlights. So when you see the city's highlights, highlights is usually the most appealing things in a city or in a place that you're visiting, so that you don't have to go to every single place, every single tourist attraction, because usually. Usually you don't have time, and sometimes when we use the word highlights, we can also use it to describe when we're watching a sports highlight program because you might not have time to watch the whole thing. So usually we get to watch highlights of, let's say, a basketball game or a hockey game. Right, indeed. So yes, you're going to check out the major attractions by browsing around at a slower pace, and if you want to do that, well, check out the grand, splendid. Athenaeum, okay, and、uh, if something's splendid, it's just fantastic. It's wonderful. You are in awe when you see this thing. Oh wow, that is so cool. That is so amazing. It's splendid. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Well, what is the grand, splendid Athenaeum? Well, it's a former theater turned bookshop that was once declared the world's most beautiful bookstore. By National Geographic magazine, so it used to be a theater, and now it's a bookshop. Yes, I've seen pictures of this online. Yes, indeed, it looks like a theater with all the seats there, or the area for seats, and then to the sides you see all these bookshelves. So you can go in there. Well, you can browse for books if you want to, but I think a lot of people are probably going in there strictly to take pictures. Pictures for their Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> you bet for social media, absolutely. So yes, indeed, National Geographic once said it's the world's most beautiful bookstore. It might even be more beautiful than Chungpin. So you can pick up a book about Buenos Aires's rich history and enjoy it with a cup of coffee or a glass of Malbec at one of the hundreds of quaint cafes throughout this beautiful South American city. So Malbec is just a type of wine, a type of alcohol specific to the region, and you can choose to have coffee or Malbec at the many quaint cafes. So a quaint cafe is a Place where you feel usually it's really small and cozy, and you can really enjoy yourself and have a good time with your friends, or even just spend the afternoon by yourself. And at this cafe, you can just enjoy this beautiful South American city. Yep, it's unique. It's special. The city is that way, but these cafes are kind of fun too. And of course, that's always fun to do when you go to a city to try to find a really unique and special cafe that doesn't look like any of the other cafes you've been to before. Stop in, sit down, have some coffee, have a drink, maybe chat with the locals. Hey, where are you from? Oh, we're from Taiwan. Oh, cool. Gee, how's life in Taiwan?、It's Etc. Etc. You might、uh, make some new friends that way. So yes, indeed, check out the quaint cafes, and there might be some other places to go in Argentina as well. But、uh, Buenos Aires is the biggest city there, and of course, lots of tourists will certainly go there and have the time of their lives. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's turn things over now to Hanny. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分介绍了 Pink House 这栋建筑。那最后一句他有提到说，据说为了呼吁和平而结合对立政党的颜色，将该建筑漆上了红白的混合油漆。文中它是用动词 oppose 的现在分词 opposing 来形容对立的。那么 oppose 就有反对、对抗的意思。我们来学它的字首字根。好，首先就来看看。P O S E pose 当名词，它只有姿势的意思嘛。那么当字根的话，它则有 put 或者是 place， 也就是放置、摆放的意思
。好，在 oppose 这个单字当中，它的字首 o p 是由 o b 变形而来。O B 它就有朝向啊、反对或者是妨碍的语义。那么字根 pose 表示放置。那同学们可以试着想，我们在下棋的时候啊，我们在对战的时候，对手的棋是不是就摆在另外一头？那敌人的将帅士兵就是朝向我们，跟我们对立的。用这样的方式，也许可以联想到这个 oppose， 它就有反对、对抗的意思喽。好，顺便补充几个有相同字根的单字。第一个是 expose， 它的字首 e x 表示向外 ，pose 表示摆放。那向外摆放，对外展示，应该很容易联想到 expose， 它有使什么铺路啊，或者是揭露的意思。第二个补充的是 dispose， 它的字首 d i s 表示分开 ，pose 表示摆放，那把事物分开摆放，那就有整理啊、安排或者是处置的语义了。第三个补充的是 propose， 它的字首 p r o 表示在点点点之前，那么 pose 表示放置。当我们把想法、计划提出来摆在前面，那就可以想到它有提议或是建议的意思喽。接着读到课文第二部分第一句，他说：“想要欣赏更多的城市景色，可以沿着七月九日大道 （July 9th Avenue） 来一趟单车之旅。”那么文中用 “take in” 来表达欣赏 ，“take in something” 就可以表达说像是欣赏景色啊、参观景点等等。我们这边也来补充一下 “take in” 的其他用法。第一种可以用 “take in” 去指摄取、吸收。也可以表达说，像是可能讯息啊、资料、知识等等，它的理解、吸收。例如 ，there was too much information to take in， 就是有太多资讯而无法吸收。那么第二个，我们可以用 take in 去表达提供住所、收容、收留的意思。哎，它也可以表达警察将人带到警察局的那种意思哦。好，那我们造个例句。Our neighbor took in a stray cat last week. 我们邻居上周收留了一只流浪猫。第三个，我们可以用 take in 去表达欺骗或是愚弄某人，常常会用被动语态 be taken in by somebody 来表达被某人给骗了。举例来说 ，Jill was taken in by a dishonest salesperson. Jill 被一个不老实的推销员给骗了。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Oppose. I oppose the new policy because I believe it will have negative consequences. Seize. The rebels managed to seize control of the city after a long and bloody battle. Foundation. A party was held to celebrate the foundation of the new hospital. Numerous. The police had to interview numerous witnesses to solve the crime. Opera. After studying the art form. Diana's class took a special trip to see the opera. Browse. Ernesto decided to browse some books in the library before having lunch. Highlight. The highlight of the trip was seeing the sun setting from the top of the mountain. Splendid. The band gave a splendid performance that earned them loud applause. Discussion starter starts now. It's time now for our discussion starter. The question is, which attractions in Buenos Aires would you be most interested in seeing, and why? Well, I definitely think the Grand Splendid Athenaeum is really interesting because I love theater, and to see a former theater converted into a bookshop that must be really cool. Ah,、uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool, and I certainly would like to check that out. But、uh, the idea of going for a bike tour along this really wide avenue sounds pretty cool to me. That's what I'd like to see, and I'd like to see all the impressive architecture along that particular avenue. And also, I'd like to go check out those quaint cafes for an opportunity to meet some of the locals or rub elbows with the locals. Because, as I said before, I do know some Spanish, so maybe I could pick up a word or two that I didn't know before. And I would also try to appreciate the Argentinian accent in Spanish, which is different from how Spanish is spoken in other Spanish-speaking countries in the world. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I am Kiki. See, See you next time. time.